Okay, these are not car chargers. It's a USB charger that you use in your car. Why do they all say car charger on them? Haha, <laughs> yeah, that's how we're starting this thing. The build today is 12 phone chargers that you can use in your car. Do you have to use them in a car? No, but it says car. What about a truck or a power station or a random lab bench power supply? That's what we're gonna do today. I need a bigger power supply. I've only got 10 amps. That's not true. I have a 100 amp one somewhere in this wreck. Anyway, today, these chargers will be checked for a lot of performance metrics. Efficiency is, of course, looked at, but for a charger that may be connected in a vehicle, some other things are important. This is the power usage with nothing plugged in, which can drain the battery in a situation faster than it needs to be drained. All to do no work. So I'll be checking that, as well as dropout voltage and voltage ripple on these portable USB charging devices. So that's a lot to look at and a lot of adapters, so the process will only be followed for one, really. In this video, I will fail miserably to answer the question, which car charger do I want to get? Well, what kind of car do you have? This won't charge it. Man, this guy's thick. It's a charger to be used in a car, not a car charger. As always, ask questions if you don't understand something. I think the market on these is insane, so there's no regulation, so you get what you get. The harm done is mostly a flat battery or a small car fire. The performance is measured and compared. If you want more information, see the links in the description. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon if you are interested. The data tables will be on the web too, eventually. So 20 watts to 165 watts today. That's a huge range. And why these ones? Absolutely no rhyme or reason. Just what I had here and wanted to test this time around. That Bassius 160 watt has been sitting here for literally two years waiting for a video. When did two years pass by? I'm going to take this Watopius PD211PT Car Charger Pro 165 watt through the unboxing and testing a little. Plastic packaging is in excess in this one. The Belkin gets an honorable mention here with all paper packaging. Once I'm in, we can see that this particular adapter comes with a user manual and a USB cable. The USB cable does not appear to be an EPR compatible cable, which is annoying as this is an EPR capable charger, but it doesn't matter more on that in a bit. In opening the user manual, we find not a whole lot. One common theme across all of these is the lack of information about how they perform or even what modes they have. I guess, okay, here, many of them didn't even come with any paperwork. Dishonorable mention for the Belkin with its entire tree of EU regulations. Like seriously, what the hell? The device itself has three USB ports. In this case, the claim of EPR or extended power range in this charger offering a 28 volt output mode and to deliver 140 watts from one USB-C port. I mean, before we moved on, we should just test that. I mean, not test it because it doesn't work at all. Totally fake. This is just sad. Not only does it not work at a lower wattage, if your device supports EPR, it doesn't work at all. It just endlessly loops. This is just the worst behaving device I have found yet. The ripple voltage is higher than the others and the idle power is too high. So it's like all bad things in one package, kind of like this video. Some other characteristics that are checked include the other USB port capabilities. The power efficiency, the idle power consumption, dropout voltage, or under voltage shutdown condition, whether or not it has a boost converter. This is important to find out if the adapter can operate higher voltage modes when the input voltage is lower than that output voltage. There were a few surprises in this regard throughout the testing. As usual, the detailed data will be on Patreon. Okay, time to speed run these things. If you want to skip this part, go for it. They're all the same, basically. This is just a quick commentary on each. The Amazon Basics dual port car charger with one USB-C port and one USB-A port. What a mouthful. Doesn't matter. It's not available anymore, and that's a good thing. It's not very good. I picked up a bunch of chargers from this company, Skosh, and the PowerVolt PD30 USB-C power delivery mini car charger with 30 watts was the first one I looked at, and it's an extremely tiny device. So tiny they add a little cloth thing to pull it out of the port since it will sink too far into the port. Anyway, the performance was good. Next up is this gosh CPDC20, 20, 20 watt charger, and this is not a bad unit. The idle power was decent, the performance was again surprisingly good. And then I checked out the Skosh PowerVolt PD60 dual USB-C port with 60 watts on each one, and this one did have a little bit higher idle power usage, but expected with the dual ports, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. Still more than I want in my car though. Next is the Watobius PD209PT 120 watt USB-C car charger, and it is another trouble spot. It just isn't stable. The ripple voltage is very high, the idle power usage is too high, and the efficiency is decent at least, but if you aren't charging a laptop, this is a waste. With these higher wattage chargers, remember you may pop a fuse. The Bassius Multiport Fast Charger 
160 watts is also not very good. It did function at least, but it's not a good device. Again, major ripple voltages and high idle power usage. Okay, premium brand. These have to be good. The Belkin CCB002 Boost Charge Dual USB-C Car Charger with 36 watts is up next. This one's actually okay. It doesn't have a ton of power or modes of operation, but it has good idle power usage and on the better side of voltage ripple. Don't worry, it gets worse. The Belkin CCA003 Boost Charge USB-C car charger with 20 watts is a little better than average also. This one makes some sense as a basic car charger and it should fit the bill just fine if it fits the socket. It didn't fit my socket. First one I found that doesn't fit. It's too narrow, slides right in and right out with no one noticing. Then suddenly things turn weird with the Belkin CCA004 Boost Charge USB-C car charger with PPS and 30 watts. This has a boost converter for some reason. So if you have a car like mine that just lowers the voltage to the power socket, it'll just drain the battery faster. This operated down to an unacceptable level of voltage before turning off of 2.5 volts. That's a stupid oversight. Also, this one doesn't fit the socket either. It's in the same case as the 30 watt, but obviously they have very different circuitry inside. Oh, there will be a teardown. Also, with the boost converter, the idle power usage is way too high. For the last one, the Belkin CCB004, just basically repeat everything I said for the 30 watt. Junk. Woo, that was a lot of chargers, and there's a lot of mixed data. Good at one thing, good at another, or just bad at everything. So how do these all compare? First of all, rated power including our previously tested models. Quite the range, five watts all the way up to 165 watts. The majority are around 30 to 50 watts though, which is a very reasonable number of watts for this socket type and typical car voltages. 165 watts is a pretty crazy power level. I had to push the voltage up to 24 volts for the 165 watt and 160 watt chargers on the larger adapters. All of these adapters operate fine on 12 to 24 volt voltage. Next up is the value proposition. Which one of these represents good value and which represents poor value? The first thing that becomes apparent is the anchor is very expensive. The Inu makes a very cheap and higher wattage device but uses a lot of idle power so maybe that value isn't so good. The one thing I noticed is there is no real trend here. Adapters are priced all over the place. I don't think this is the parameter that should decide what to get all other things considered equal. Next up is the weight of the adapters. Again, this is one I don't really consider to be all that important, but some of these are really compact and lightweight, so if that's your thing, go for it. I think it's something that will certainly require cross-correlation with some other specifications. The Scosh adapters are incredibly lightweight. Okay, next is an overload condition measurement. Overload watts. I organized this as a percentage beyond the rated maximum load, so everyone is on a level playing field. Of course, some of them don't deliver all the watts to a single port, so it gets a little confusing. All the adapters had great behavior in this metric. Every adapter shut down within a safe operating limit and didn't try to catch any cables on fire. The next thing is efficiency. Efficiency is a ratio of the same unit of anything. It can be potatoes picked to potatoes planted. In this case, it's power out over power in. The goal of any converter is higher efficiency. So the higher the better. The better the efficiency, the less the worry about heat becomes. In this case, the Bassey's 100 watt has the best in class marks from the previous round. Really, what is it with that company in 100 watts? Although it's the worst at idle. The Belkin 37 watt is one of the worst modern devices. The old 5 watt Griffin is still the worst, but this is an old adapter not available anymore. Some honorable mentions here include the Scotia adapters, which all performed quite well. The next graph is important for how hot these things are going to get. This ultimately is another way to look at the efficiency, but it is how many watts these things need to dissipate. As I've shown in power adapters videos, these things don't have any active cooling, are often stuffed into small compact areas so the chances of overheating are high. I didn't explicitly measure temperature, but instead, these are the maximum number of watts these may need to dissipate. In a tiny case, more than a few of these are going to get hot, very hot. Some of these are rated ridiculously low for temperature. 25 degrees C max operating temperature. Have you ever been in a hot car? I think my car gets that hot on a sunny day in winter. This is dumb. So power loss, the more watts, the hotter it gets, basically. The smaller adapters have an edge here as they have less work to do and therefore they create less heat in general. But these larger adapters are going to chuck out some heat and that's probably not going to be very safe. Not to mention the Bassius will try to pull 18 amps from your socket. Idle power usage is an important parameter for these as well as dropout voltage. The idle power usage covers quite a range on these. I'd recommend not to use anything over a tenth of a watt. Some of these were over a watt. That's just too much. On 12 volts, the anchor is one of the best performers. 
When switching over to 24 volts, it's the same story with this adapter. On some of these, these numbers start to get out of hand. This could be more than an entire car's use at idle. The low idle power is for a reason. It's battery powered. The battery will last like two weeks on one of these bad performers still, but it's just wasteful. The dropout voltage is a condition that often happens in automotive situations when a large device is powered on, like the starter, and voltages can drop to single digit voltages. I don't have this data on the original tested devices, but I do on these new devices, and every single one of these did poorly. They basically don't have under voltage lockout in any cases, so these will drain your battery flat and destroy your battery, and not think twice about it. From 2.2 volts to 6 volts, it's really an unacceptable level to cut out the charger for an automotive situation. Okay, well, there they are. Chargers that can optionally be used in a car. That was seriously a whirlwind of data and adapters. So. Which one do I pick? I use the Anchor one. Been using it since making the last video. It's expensive and it works. Has low idle power usage and high efficiency. All these high wattage adapters are just jokers. The adapter itself is fine, but the socket is not made for this kind of current on a 12 volt system. And they're so tiny, they can't get the heat out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.